everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So, I'm here today with just um, like kind of a casual here's what's on my desk video. I figured I haven't really had a chance to decompress since Mass Make March. You know, I I haven't had like just a general sit and chat with you video for quite some time since like I went on a vacation. I yeah I've done a bunch of stuff so <laughs> I thought I would just maybe take a little moment to just hang out with you while I work on what I'm working on so I've had um I mean an absolute whirlwind the last couple of weeks like so what I did with Mass Make March I got started on it I planned you know for quite some time um to do Mass Make March and I got I'd say a week ahead of videos you know in um February I was like okay I've I've gone a week ahead I'm good to go and this is going to be easy and then right around the middle of March I started to feel like I was getting burned out not from this stuff but just from work in general and my like my life in general because I'm a very busy person I have two small kids I work full-time in a pretty demanding job um I do this um and I'm also like homeschooling and um, my kids are, well, they're both, you know, they're, they're three and six. So they're kind of needy of my time a lot right now. So I'm a very busy person. <laughs> so I was starting to feel like I just needed to get away a little bit. And so I've decided this year to kind of be a little budgetary with vacation like every year we tend to do a couple of vacations not you know super exquisite ones I'm just I'm not at that stage with small children that I want to like fly anywhere or anything like that especially right now when you know the world's still um, dealing with some stuff so that being said we decided to go to visit my in-laws who are wonderful people i'm lucky in that respect i am actually always happy and excited to go see my in-laws when uh, i can they're they're actually really wonderful um so we decided to do that because my son hadn't been to the united states where they live since he was born um because he was born at the end of 2019 right before everything closed so we haven't gone anywhere and um sorry one second <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i think i talked about this a little in my thrift haul video that i got my vacation haul video that i was you know pretty nervous to travel there and whatnot but everything went really well so i will focus on the positive things which i, I have nothing negative even that i'm hiding from me <laughs> I have nothing to gripe about oddly um but anyway, I'll talk about that in a minute. I want to show you kind of what I'm working on. So I'll, you ever do this, like you start something um, and then it goes, like I have my multi-shelf back burner, basically. It's like this, um, if you watched my paper studio tour, at one point during it, you would have seen where I keep this like wooden, like they're, they're like file folder shelves. It's like a wooden cabinet that's stuck to my wall. And um, it's got about eight like slots in it and each one has a wire basket. And I use those wire baskets for my works in progress. So for quite some time now, I've had this like work in progress. It's a series of journals and they were just, they're VHS um, tapes that I'm turning into journals and so like they sat there I had done the covers like I had finished making the covers into book covers but that's all I had done I, I had like cut out a few things I had a couple of books that I wanted to incorporate in these and it was all just stuffed in this one basket like this is kind of what's left and I kept this tape because I wanted to use some of it as trim on pages I, I'd done a few things I've got like some stickers and stuff I'd I'd found it when I was on vacation last summer like um, a film reviewers journal and it was actually in a little free library so I grabbed that to put it in these journals um, 
So it had been sitting there forever and I was like, why am I not, you know, working on these? And I just had this renewed spirit for them. So I actually selected signatures and got them all put in. I did the trimming. Um, I found with that tape, it was a lot safer, easier, smarter to kind of go ahead and stitch it on a strip of paper and then glue that strip of paper onto the page because to try to like get it to go um, directly on the page, this stuff was hard to stitch through. I, I don't know why. Sometimes things, I guess because it was slippery, it wanted to let go and it wanted to slide around and it was just making me a little kooky. So what I did was um, I took my off cuts of my pages like this and I would just line up the first one, start stitching, stitch all the way down, stitch it on. And then I'd take another piece of paper right up behind it like this one. And I would keep going until I had a big long strip um, that was like many, many, many papers long. And I had enough to just go ahead and glue them on. And I think that that's honestly nicer. So this is what I'm working on right now. So these books, they have things from iconic films in them, but also lots of stuff on like the cool, like history of television. I found this cool TV book and they've also got these, um, some of them in the center have, um, they have different things, but like these have old movie posters. Um, they are really fun. So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in them. Now I'm working on ephemera for them now. Some of them I decided to make like these paper ruffles that come out the side. And I think that they look kind of cool. So yeah, that's where these are going. So these are all different, you know, tape cases. And I just think these are so retro and like iconic, you know, and I found such a variety of them. And these all come from my recycle center, the, the place where I get so much stuff. Um, and for the longest time, like the tapes, because they were something that couldn't be recycled very easily, um, our recycle center gave them away for free so like the tapes themselves were free they now charge a dollar for them I think they've started to realize that like hey you know old technology is new again so they're not free anymore but that's what I'm working on so today I'm just trying to get the rest of this stuff that I cut out from this book on like the history of the creation of TV. I just really need to glue it on here and cut it out and then I'm going to add more ephemera to the books and then kind of do a, a bit of a scope on how I'm doing ephemera wise and what is needed in each book. Um, and I'll do like the finishing touches. So that's the plan. So I'm not working on anything like, you know, crazy. I'm just going to chat and whatnot. So, um, today was a nice day. The weather's getting beautiful here. I am so happy to feel like, oh, spring's coming. It's like finally here. So my in-laws live in Maryland and, um, you know, that's on the um, east coast of the United States. And so we got to go to the ocean, which was great. We, we actually had a really nice day, like nice enough to put our feet in the ocean. Yes, it was cold, but like not painfully so. And that was really great. Um, got to take my son to the ocean for the first time. And my daughter, she hasn't been like to the United States since she was, I guess, two and a half, three, three. Yeah, three maybe three and um, not quite three. So yeah, it was a long time and um, we had a really great time at the ocean and we even, so if you know me, you know I'm like a little more um, COVID careful than a lot of people are and I don't eat inside restaurants. It's just a thing I'm not comfortable doing yet. And um, so we were able to eat at a restaurant that had an outdoor patio that was open because it was just an unseasonably warm, lovely day. And so they let us sit on the patio and there was hardly anyone else out there. Maybe one other guy for a little while and he was nowhere near us. So I felt so just reassured and comfortable and happy to have everyone there. And it was really nice. Um, we also took the kids to Hershey, Pennsylvania to Chocolate World and that was a lot of fun. I always um, like going there. So when you go to 
Hershey, Pennsylvania. So, you know, the whole, the whole town is built around Hershey's chocolate factory. And you'll know that as you drive around, you'll see the chocolate workers union. You'll see obviously the Hershey factory. Um, Hershey park has a large theme park. Um, I think they even have a zoo, but like zoos aren't really my thing. Um, they have, um, a water park that's a lot of fun and it's fun to go to Hershey Park in the winter too because they have nice lights and that you can get like a nice Hershey's chocolate like hot chocolate and kind of wander around the shops I remember doing that with my husband but when we were dating but um one of the funniest things like so when when we were younger when we were dating um we went there and it was like so hokey when you first go in there's like this tour of the chocolate factory and it's got like total um like Willy Wonka vibes like it's slightly spooky <laughs> so you go through this tunnel with all these lights there's these animatronic cows that are singing like made about chocolate like it's it's honestly so weird um and I mean it's weird when you're like a critical you know um younger person who's like what is this <laughs> but with kids oh it's a it's a different experience um, so they loved it. I mean, I loved it too. I think more so because I was there with them. And I always loved the fact that when you were going through like the, the part where they show you like roasting the cacao, like, the beans and like how it smells like chocolate. And you see like this melted chocolate in a vat and then they show like the Hershey's Kisses rolling up on a belt and all this. I mean, I don't know if that's actual stuff that's like a part of the factory or something or if it's just there for show for like you know I'm sure it's a little bit of both but it was fun and I loved it and we might have bought like $80 in chocolate for my kids <laughs> but it's okay I also found that they have no, no sugar sugar free chocolate which is great I was like oh this is awesome so I even have a little stash I'll show you so my daughter hangs out with me down in the um, studio a lot, as you know. So I have this conveniently, you know, crafty box looking box that <gasps> it's just got a little bit of stacks in it. So yeah, they've got Hershey's Zero Sugar Dark Chocolate. So I'm happy to have those. I also, yes, have some Andes and Dove chocolate in there because I love Andes mints and um, Whenever I go to the US, I have to get Dove chocolate because I love Dove chocolate and they don't sell it in Canada. And so yeah, as long as I don't, you know, eat a bunch of those in a day, I'm okay. <laughs> One or two. So that was Chocolate World. We had fun. Um, what else? So, oh, we are so busy. I felt like my vacation was like a roller coaster ride, but honestly, it's like, stuff like that with kids it's easier when you keep them busy and you take them out on trips because for me staying home even in my own home with my children for like too long is exhausting because you know they get really wound up and they need to expend their energy and they they either expend it by like going crazy in your house or like they expend it by going out you know and running and playing and I prefer the latter of the two it's certainly less clean up so I also went to Lancaster Pennsylvania to Kitchen Kettle Village in Intercourse Pennsylvania um I had so much so okay I don't know if you've been to like Amish country in Pennsylvania like Pennsylvania Dutch Mennonite and Amish country but like you know if you've ever been to any place like that it's very similar we have the same kind of um settlements here where I live not too far from here as well um <laughs> so my husband almost got me like inducted into like Amish what is that rolling sound above my head sorry my husband almost got me inducted into like an Amish like cult or something by accident so I can't remember if I mentioned this during my thrift haul video but if I did I apologize for repeating myself but my husband and I we throughout our relationship have always been like big thrifters antiquers collectors and 
Just give me a moment, I need to address this noise. Sorry, that was my dog rolling his bone all over the kitchen floor. Oh my gosh. It has peanut butter in the center and it's like a marrow bone. Oh my gosh, he's so loud. Anyways, so um, my husband saw a sign that said mud sale and he's like, oh cool, what's that? Right, thinking it's gonna be some, like he saw that it on the window of the like firehouse that it was in, it had a big sign that said books. So he was trying to like look after my, um, you know, my love for books and um, yeah, send me to this crazy sale. So he and my son played around in this like, kind of like horse parking, <laughs> horse parking area and looked at a horse and there was a nice man there who like was doing, you know, carriage rides, like the kind of commercial stuff that the Amish do. So they were doing that while my mother-in-law and my daughter and me were sent off to go check out this mud sale. So like, as soon as we approached the building, I should have known because I could hear an auctioneer like dim -dum 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 -dum, you know, like do not thing that they do. And yeah, as soon as we opened the door, there were like a hundred men, Amish men in like their best Sunday clothes or something and their hats, all sitting on these fold out chairs in front of an auctioneer and like, when the door opened, it was literally like a record scratching. And I was like, oh, and I immediately was like, nope, and closed the door. And we like rushed out of there. My daughter, okay, she's, we were at the ocean the day before. So she's got like a rainbow tie dyed Rehoboth beach shirt on. And I'm like, we literally look like the most tactless tourists of the eighties, like stepping into like, you know, stepping into a time machine and going to like this Amish settlement and like totally irritating everyone. So yeah, <laughs> my husband, always wants to go to like flea markets or sales or you know garage sales like I always say like can we not go to like you know Ed Gein's fire sale please like because he always wants to take me I'm sorry for the horrible reference but he always wants to take me to like the scariest places like I don't know, that is just not my idea of like the kind of yard sale or flea market I want to go to he's like oh you know, look at this abandoned house that this guy is selling clock radios out of. Let's go check it out. You know, like this is the kind of places he wants to go. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'll skip that one. We're good. And yeah, one of these days, I, I just need to like listen to my voice of reason and not him. <laughs> as cute as he is, he's going to get me kidnapped. So yeah, I came back and I told him and he laughed and I'm like, okay, next time you're going in there not me but we had a great day um we went to kitchen kind of village we had nice warm soft pretzels outside and that was fun and um we um yeah, we, we walked around quite a bit. There's an incredible quilt store there. And we did a little tour. They have like a little, I think it's a car museum there too. Um, I didn't go to the car museum. I'm not interested in that kind of thing. But they have these funny signs outside that tell you about the history of the town, like Intercourse, Pennsylvania. So of course, with a name like Intercourse, you know, something strange has had to have happened at some point. So on this like, these signs in the middle of this you know Amish kind of settlement right I mean it's it's Amish yes but let's not pretend that the Amish all live the same way like they they always have they don't and they're definitely like consumer you know they're happy to take your money essentially like I don't I don't pretend that they have no concept of what like modern times are right so like this is not beyond them but the first um the first thing on the sign is like this write-up of some like uh, I don't know like if it was like some kind of a pornography business or, or something like some adult film or adult content kind of um, company wanted to make Intercourse Pennsylvania like their headquarters like it wasn't Playboy but it was like something like that and so it's like a whole write-up on the town's like sign and oh my gosh I laugh because you know you're looking around at all of these you know 
German, you know, or Dutch, you know, Pennsylvania people <laughs> dressed very modestly. And I just came out of the quilt store where, you know, they're all like getting their fabric. And, um, oh, I had such a laugh because it's just an unexpected little tidbit. But yeah, I think they just have like such a sense of humor about, you know, a lot of things. Um, one of my favorite things driving through there, uh, any, any kind of Mennonite or Amish settlement is seeing all the laundry on the laundry lines because you see like a laundry line that will have like from baby size to like mom and dad size with lots of kids in between all their little outfits all like hung on a, a line outside and to dry and it's just so nice and like sometimes you'll see like a line that has you know 25 pairs of like blue jeans because you know it's like a farming family and they wear a lot of blue jeans and they've got a lot of um you know men and boys that do the farm work there um that that is like the outdoor kind of farm work and uh yeah but but I mean the thing about those kind of communities though is that like I don't know I'm not I don't live in the fairy tale of things very much I've kind of surpassed that point in my life you know I know that um unfortunately the Amish also run a lot of puppy mills I know that they don't treat their horses very nicely and that they also sell them for for slaughter um so yeah I mean it's I think it's good to go into things with your eyes wide open and not be like romanticized into the belief that like everything is like an experience that's actually quite curated for tourism so um yeah you got to be careful. They're also not the kind of people you want to do something like buy a puppy from or something because it really supports something that you don't, you don't want to know. I rescued, um, a dog some time ago. Unfortunately, he was like my sole animal and I lost him now two, two and a half years ago. And I miss him all every day, every single day. He was the most important little animal that I've ever owned. I think, I mean, yeah so he was a rescue from an amish puppy mill in ohio and he was rescued by a toronto organization that um specialized in chihuahuas and small small dogs mainly he's a chihuahua and um when i got him he was so scared that he would stand up with his back up against the wall and it took me I'd say within weeks but I mean these were intensive weeks of just trying to gain his trust and let him know how safe he was and how loved he was and that he was staying with us and that you know he was our family and just trying to make him feel all those things as best I could and once I did it was like I don't know you know sometimes it's like you wait for or you work hard for something but then like the payoff is unbelievable and that's what it was with him i would say he made every single day of my life joy he was my baby he was everything i, I loved the everything with him he was amazing and yeah when we lost him i was devastated because he was only about we estimate we do the best we can um we estimate he was around probably 10 years old when we lost him which is very young for a chihuahua but um he might have been a little a little older maybe 12 but still far too young and it was because he had heart failure he had a heart murmur when i got him and um yeah the the conditions which he was kept in before we we got him were not good i won't go into it because it's just depressing but um those kind of things as well as just bad genetics and breeding you know they take a toll so animals like that typically have a shorter lifespan as well as many um often many very pricey pricey health conditions like due to bad genetics and this is what you don't realize when you take home that puppy that you see in a basket and you know it looks all like oh these are farm raised animals it's it's an illusion uh, i can definitely tell you that 
that they're actually raised more like um, commercial chickens in industrialized farms. It's very similar. They use the same battery cages stacked one on top of the other and it's not nice. So what happens is like you bring home a really cute puppy but then he may have parasites. Later on he's going to require a lot of expensive dental work. Um, you know there may just be genetic issues things like that will develop and you have to just really be very careful. Um, I always recommend just rescue if you can because those animals are the ones that need the home the most at the moment and if you can't rescue then um, try to find a rehome situation where people need a home because of a life situation like home to home is one of those websites where you can often find rehome situations often people who have to go into care or something like that it's a really good option if you can't get a rescue through a local rescue or even a far away one like um through pet finder you can often connect with lots of rescues with the rescue world i would just caution um getting with dogs anyways be very careful about getting dogs that have been shipped from other countries from places like you know meat markets and stuff like that um and just the reason that i say that is because i have been in that um i've been involved in animal rescue for quite some time since high school really and um Oh, the thing that, that has happened with, um, like most things, where there's money to be had, <laughs> people will make a business out of it. And so a lot of these places that say, oh, we're bringing animals from, you know, Egypt or Syria or China or whatever, um, a lot of times they lie, first of all. They do things that are underhanded, like stealing dogs from indigenous re um, reservations things like that lying about where the dog came from or if a dog comes from trauma a dog typically has trauma and unless they've had professional um, you know therapy and stuff that trauma doesn't go away and it can be misplaced on you later so you know you have to think about those things and and be very careful because I I used to do a recurring art show at this local art gallery and there was a lovely woman there who was a volunteer for many years and then became like a curator and um, she had a neighbor who was having like a little get together so she went to the neighbor's house and this neighbor had a rescue actually from like the the Chinese like meat you know dog meat market kind of and, and I have another friend who does too has not had any bad experiences at all so I'm not saying all dogs that come from these situations are the same and I don't dissuade you to rescue them I I would encourage you I'm just saying like know what you're getting into know that you're gonna have um, to take some precautions like one thing that a lot of people make the biggest mistake and this isn't with animals that have experienced trauma just in general is they have this idea of i know my dog and also people take a lot of risks by like letting their children jump all over their dogs not respecting the dog or al allowing strangers children or adults to feed their dog when they're out on the, in the street you know i actually had a situation with a dog and my daughter like so we have rules about dogs so number one if you want to pet a dog you always have to ask the owner and secondly you never touch them when they're sleeping or eating because that's the perfect way to get bit um so my daughter was at the ocean during this vacation and there was a dalmatian with a couple of you know very nice men who were across the boardwalk from us um, my daughter had asked to go over to the dogs and I said no because we were busy. Um, we were discussing what we wanted to do for lunch and we were sort of having a discussion and I didn't want to have to like step away from that to manage um, the dog. 
the dog situation. So she she was like, okay. So she like she's she's great. She listens when I say no. She understands that that's no. Um, but then these men, these two like older nice men, and each had a dog. One had a Dalmatian, and one had like a like a like a fluffy fluffy sheep dog. So at one point the man said, you know, oh, do you want to pet my dog? Because he could see her looking at his dog. So like, I think he was trying to be, you know, nice. Um, so like, she was like, yeah, can I mom? And I was like, okay. So, you know, I felt bad. Like I walked over with her and, you know, he didn't know, the man didn't know that I'd already said no. He, he had no part in it. But I also think it made me think about this. Like when I'm in public with my dog don't interfere with other people like or their families you know just do your thing let them do their thing so um I walked over there and you know the dogs were very friendly and my kids were petting them and they're having a great old time and we had um so when you go to the ocean like it's it's like a big thing to get fries from this one fry place that I forget the name of all of a sudden. Um, so we had like, they come in a bucket. So like we had like six people. So we were just, you know, got a big bucket of fries for the family kind of thing. And the kids were eating them. And so my daughter wanted to give a fry to the dog. And I said, no, 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 no. And then like he said, oh no, no. I said she could. So then I let my guard down for two seconds and I said, oh, okay. So like, you know, because another adult said it was okay, I like did that, you know, lapse in judgment thing, right? Like you don't like, I don't know, we forget our boundaries when we're trying to be civil, right? So I did that and I now I'm like, oh, why did I do that? So, so she hands this dog a French fry and he eats it. And then, you know, kids, they love that kind of thing. The minute they think that they've, you know, <clears throat> done something good, they've successfully made a friend or done a kind thing, they want to keep doing it. So, you know, she's coming, you know, and she's grabbing another fry out of the bucket. And I said, okay, okay, that's enough. You know, we don't want to make them sick. So as she's handing the final fry to the dog, like, he does this like weird thing like she sat down beside him and he kind of got aggressive and like he didn't bite her but he like kind of rap like I don't know rapidly moved his head around her and growled like it was it was like everyone thought he had bitten her but he didn't and but she was so shocked and I immediately was like you know when you you're like okay indicator I made a mistake that was my reminder like do not break your own rules pay attention this is why you have these guidelines for your children because like you don't want them to get bit by a dog you know so like that was a reminder for me you know to like keep firm in my own boundaries so regardless I'm, I'm getting off track but like the whole thing I was saying about the woman who worked at this art gallery she went to a friend's house who was having a little gathering they were in the kitchen talking and she had this dog who was the rescue dog from um, China and all of a sudden this dog like leaped up onto its back feet and it bit this woman's face right in the side and like it I, I guess you know I'm not gonna get graphic but let's just say when I saw her I absolutely knew she'd been in a trauma traumatic I mean she required surgeries like almost like a facelift type surgery to kind of put her back together oh it was just awful and she told me you know like she had just kind of gotten through the first the first kind of reparative surgery and told me the situation so <clears throat> the dog was destroyed after this and um, you know, just unfortunate. But like I said, you know, was there food in the kitchen? There was no food at all. She had not motioned to try to pet the dog. She'd not tried to feed the dog. She wasn't looking at it. She was mid conversation. So, you know, it was obviously a situation where the dog misunderstood something that was going on, felt like they needed to respond with aggression or protection or whatever. And yeah, it didn't go, it didn't go well, you know, so that is a traumatic response that's not a typical experience from a dog that hasn't gone through something that causes panic um so yeah you, you need to be mindful of those kind of things especially like if you make the decision to get a dog like that 
um, be real careful with it around other people because you know if it's with you and you're with it all the time you are going to learn about it learn its quirks and like what it likes and doesn't like but for people who are not around it they're not you know the dog doesn't see them the same as it sees you and also never think you know an animal you don't <laughs> no one does they can always surprise you with some kind of a spontaneous thing. Because, you know, most people don't choose to live with aggressive animals. And I think it's a pretty common thing to hear. But she's never or he's never bit anyone. And, like, you know, you always hear that, right? So it's like, you just got to keep that in mind. And, I mean, I'm a huge dog lover. I've been a dog lover my whole life. I can't imagine my life without a dog. But I also don't pretend that, like... I can predict all of their thoughts and motions and with kids I'm extra careful because like it is um all too common that people just like let their kids go way too rough with dogs and you know they give dogs a lot of credit for their patience but everybody has their enough is enough kind of moment I think right so yeah it's like just a lot of stuff to think about um, right so that i think is just a snippy bit just making sure i'm still recording here i've been yapping for a while so yeah that's um my my dog rant um I went to Adamstown, Pennsylvania because I wanted to check out like I mean it's renowned for its antiques but it's also renowned for its like high prices because basically there's like this strip that you drive down and like there's just a ton of antique stores antique malls so I didn't get a lot I got a few things um, got a couple couple books a little bit of ephemera um, I think my biggest shopping excursion was to a Joann's a couple of times um, where I got lots of 50% off Tim Holtz, which is pretty awesome. All their paper goods were 50% off the day that I was there. And um, their Fiskars stuff was also 40% off. I didn't get anything because I didn't need it, but that's a pretty good deal too. Um, and then I found some paper, like paper studio stuff at Gabe's. I think someone told me that that is a brand that sold at Hobby Lobby where I don't shop. But um, Gabe's had a ton of that. I've never really been to Gabe's before. I guess it's a closeout store. My, uh, my mother-in-law likes to shop there for like, um, kind of like random like things that like, my father-in-law needs like plain white t-shirts to wear under his button-ups and like you know kind of like men's stuff but i also found this gigantic jug water bottle that i love there so yeah i got that we actually found some really cute shoes for the kids too i got spongebob heelys for my daughter so she's gonna learn how to use heelys we're gonna take her out with her helmet and her pads and everything and she can play with her heelys and um Hold on. I got my son some cute baby shark shoes. So if you're a parent, I'm sorry I even said the the baby shark the B word out loud because I'm sure you're like, oh don't talk about it. Because ah, you know if you're a parent from this generation, you've probably gone through your baby shark phase. But um <laughs> my son just really likes baby sharks, so I indulge these things because he is adorable and so he saw them and he said big shark and I'm like okay <laughs> so I got him these shoes and they're cute they glow like the bottom has all these little like sparkling lights and he loves that so yeah it was nice it was really nice all right I think I've glued all the stuff down I need to glue so I can actually like put this stuff in the journals now for a bit and then like so coming back um from the u.s we we drove we didn't fly we always drive 
and um, <clears throat> we got back to the Canadian border and like so you know when you're coming up to the Canadian border from the US like there's all these lanes and you sort of choose the shortest one to get into to go through customs and um, so my husband's like okay which one do you think and I'm like oh that one you know whatever I whatever I don't really know so we we go and all of a sudden like we're probably five or six cars back and it's like every lane in front of us is like whipping by and we're not moving at all and then one car like we see them get you know kind of pulled over and we're like oh geez okay so then another car goes through and it takes forever like everyone was just taking way too long and we're watching all these other lines just whipping and i'm like okay we made the wrong decision um so then finally we were one car away and the car in front of us was paused for like 15 minutes and i'm like what could they be doing like you know they kind of typically have a policy like they don't keep you there forever at that in the lineup with this massive lineup like they will send you on for second like secondary inspection they don't keep the line waiting so the whole thing was weird and so then finally the, this woman comes out of the booth and she goes, you know, to get this guy from the next booth and then another guy comes out and like, you know, you have no idea what all these people are doing or what's going on. Like there's either like, you know, some kind of a WMD ahead of you or, you know, like you have no idea. So we're just sitting there and my daughter's like, what is taking so long? <laughs> because she's a six-year-old teenager and um so finally they clear out this car and then we get up to the window and she's like hey guys like this this woman working in there the the border agent she's like i'm so sorry my system has gone down like four times and i don't know what's going on but you know I, I think it should be good for now we just rebooted it i'm like oh no worries and she's like i know everyone in line is probably like oh what is taking her so long and i said that's okay you just look tougher right <laughs> like you, you've got to look on the bright side so she was super nice and we got through no problem and um <clears throat> yeah it was a bit of an experience and then we got back and you know got unpacked and that was good and then like my work week started and it's been the perfect storm uh, at work because so I have a colleague who has decided to leave the the group she works in here in Canada and work for our, our France um, office for a different position so some of her work is very closely related to what I do so it has just made sense that I should pick up some part of her work and then so her work's being split up between several people and a little bit of it's coming to me and I mean it's it's not a little bit because it's like an overall kind of product ownership type role that that I'm in with this thing and so I have a lot to learn and so that happened and also we are at this point in time where we're about to plan our work for the next three months and so that requires like an all kind of company review of everything so i have to present like for that product what we need to do so i haven't honestly had enough time to really do as much learning as i would like to but like i just have to kind of do my best and you know let her transition out of this and so we can you know move on um so yeah it's been it's been a little tough and then my kids like my daughter she caught a little cold like this wasn't a very serious thing but like it's still not fun having anything in the house like it was just a little cold like a two three day thing but you know she was kind of high needs like especially when you know your body is producing lots of boogies right it's like your kids you gotta constantly clean them up and deal with all that so she got it she's over it and now my son had it and he's getting over it and the thing about kids under the age of like three and under when they get like anything that produces any kind of thing from the body it is like a total oh, i don't want that there a total pain because like they don't manage things like they don't you know blow their nose properly you know <laughs> so you're kind of like ah. Uh, um yeah i want that there so yeah 
it's been a lot. Now they're both pretty much healthy. My son's just kind of getting over the last little bits of it. Thankfully, I didn't catch it. Neither did my husband. We were like, oh, get away from me. But you can't do that with little kids, right? You've got to comfort them. And so, um, yeah, I just lucked out. I didn't catch it. Um, what's this? Yeah, here we go. I'll put this in here. And then I'll do one at the back. I like to mix things up here. I still need to put a back pocket on this. I actually need one for the other one too. I should put that in too. Um, and then I also was like wanting to do my spring sale in March. I was thinking maybe I would do it while I was away because then I wouldn't be posting anything new and I'd truly be clearing out which is what I'm trying to do in my shop and thank you to all of you who have been in the shop lately and have helped me to clear out several things. Um, I'm so happy to see journals going home with people especially my repeat customers. I'm always happy to see things go home to you and know that your little collections have a new friend in them. So um, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of stuff. So I felt a little bit like, was that a vacation? Cause I think I'm more tired now than before I left, but I feel like some of the various, you know, cups in my life were filled rather than like all being empty. And I feel good about that. So and we got to see some friends, which was really nice. My, uh, my husband's, you know, lifelong friends that have also become my friends. Um, my husband's best friend has three kids of his own and he was really great with my kids, took them to the library and like played games with my daughter, which was nice. And um, we got to go to like some great downtown Baltimore type things um, and like visit with people some of our good friends. Okay, it's here. <laughs> I still have a lot of work to do in these books, I'm sure you can tell. <clears throat> fold that this way there's some really cool like information snippets out of this tv book and i can't wait to just include them because like, i'm making big journal cards with them because they're just so fun to read okay that one and then i think i said i wanted to put a pocket in the back of this one so let's use this for that because i love this if I can, is it slightly too big? Yeah, I can cut it down a bit though. We've got room. We also went to a really fun children's museum and I went to Lancaster. It was called Hands On House and it was in it was near Lancaster, Pennsylvania, because I went to um, the Lancaster Creative Supply that same day. Creative Reuse. What a cool, cool place. I was so happy to get to go there. I often see like other people, you know, other like journalers that talk about going to like, I think there's one in Portland. I think there's one in Arkansas, like that I've heard about somewhere. Yeah, so I am um, so happy to get to go to one. It was a lot of fun. And the people were just so nice and also they were supporting really great charities which is always like awesome and i always love just any kind of um a reuse dynamic right like i keep this out of the landfill let's do something creative with it always happy to do that kind of thing okay that one We need a pocket for the front here. This one would be cute. Perfect. Okay. 
Yeah, so the last week I've just really been trying to catch up on work and um, trying to get stuff done. I want to get these journals done because they've been on the back burner and I really love this idea and this, this is a fun thing. I do have another, I have another vintage, an old book that I want to work on next. I think I'm going to use this one, <clears throat> Nedra by George Bar McCutcheon. It's a really pretty book and I think it will make a lovely, lovely journal, but I should put it down and work on what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I can hear my dog whining. Probably means he needs to go out for his nightly walk. So we went, <laughs> so we went through this weird thing this week. So my husband primarily takes on the chore of walking our, our new dog, um, because like throughout the day because I'm working. Um, so I'll come up and like, you know, kind of get lunch started or whatever, and he'll take the dog out. So, um, this week when he took the dog out, like we, he had noticed there was, the one of the neighbors, their dog was on the porch barking at our dog, but he didn't think anything of it. He thought the dog was just like on the porch tied up or, you know, let out for a pee because some people do that. Um, <clears throat> so he thought nothing of it. And then he went on his way. And then that evening when, you know, work day was over, the neighbors came home and they were like looking all around and he, he, he had taken the dog out and he heard them say, Hey, have you, you know, seen our dog? And so he was like, yeah, like around, you know, 1230 when I walked, um, my dog, I saw your dog. So they were like, Oh, you know, like, and he's asking all these questions. So I think what happened, like, so they have two dogs that run out the door, like, um, when they open it, basically they will run it under the porch to greet whoever's there. They're very friendly, but they go out of the house onto the front steps. So that's what happened, I think. And he got left out there by accident and they didn't realize he was out there. So, you know, so sad. We were, we were stressed about it, you know, and we knew they were out looking. Oh, look at this 49 market film strip. Isn't that fun? And I'll put Farrah Fawcett in there. So, um, you know, we, we were like thinking about this dog for days now. So then tonight, like we don't know these neighbors, so we didn't want to keep like asking them because probably it wasn't a fun thing to talk about. And also we didn't want to be like the weirdo neighbors who are obsessed with these people who lost their dog. So, you know, we kind of looked that night and the following night and day as we drove around, we sort of looked, we did a little extra driving after we went to the gym to just see like if we could find him and we didn't so then tonight I was like looking at my phone and like I don't know if you get these like news pop-ups about like things that are kind of you know in your algorithm in your area so I do so <laughs> I get this little pop-up tonight of like this dog that like is missing you know was found on the 401 highway near Guelph and like they don't know where it came from and you know so is this your dog is like the the headline right so I'm like huh like my husband said he was kind of he looked like a little blondish kind of bull bulldog and I'm like okay but he was like kind of a mixed breed so that's what this dog looks like and so I thought hey could that be him so I, so I showed the picture to my husband he's like yeah you know it could be so I said well why don't I wander down and check you know with the people if like this is their dog so he's like yeah okay so then tonight I wandered down and I, I knocked on the door and as soon as I knocked I heard like dogs barking and I'm like okay maybe it won't be because I can hear dogs barking but maybe it's other dogs right so the lady finally came to the door and both of her dogs rushed out onto the porch and I said hey you know did you get your dog back? Because we I just saw this article tonight of a dog that like matches your description of that my husband gave your dog. And she was like, oh no, no, this is him. So they got him back. I was so happy. And they probably think that we're weirdos because we're still like looking for their dog. <laughs> but I couldn't help it. I was like, oh my gosh. You know, if I lost my dog, I would want everybody who wanted to help to please help because I'd be so sad sorry for that little snip I just had to switch batteries but that being said that should be my sign that I should try to wrap this video up um first I wanted to read this to you this is the funniest thing um that I pulled out of the tv book and 
I love, love Mr. Rogers so much, both <laughs> the person and the, the show, all of it. So this was a really cute, like, letter. Um, fanfare, dear Mr. Rogers. Hello, neighbor. I want to explain why you have not found me waiting in front of the TV this week. Mr. Reitman, my boyfriend, doesn't want me to visit you anymore. But I didn't want you to think that I was sick or that I didn't like you anymore. And anyway, I remembered you talking about how sometimes friends hurt each other without thinking, and how it was important to be considerate of other people's feelings, and that's why I'm writing. It all started that day. I visited you, and you showed me your drain, the kitchen drain. I love visiting you because your house is like a picture. Everything is always in its place. I spend all my time picking up after Mr. Reitman, who isn't concerned with things looking pretty as a picture. I hope this doesn't embarrass you, but I also think you look as neat as your house. Before we became friends, I never knew anyone who changed from his street clothes to his comfortable clothes at home. Well, that day, after you had hung up your street jacket in your closet and taken off your street shoes and put on your comfortable sweater and sneakers, you walked into your kitchen and turned on the faucet in your sink. Of course, there was not one dirty dish. We both watched the water go down the drain. Then you turned off the tap and turned to me and said, Isn't that wonderful? Did you ever stop to think about what a drain does? You have at least two drains in your house, in the kitchen and in the bathroom. Perhaps you have some more, do you? Then you turn on the faucet again, and we watch the water swirl, sometimes swiftly, sometimes slowly, down the drain. I had never thought about the function of a drain before, not even when I was washing all of Mr. Reitman's dirty dishes. Without a drain, where would the water go? Drains are wonderful. Life is wonderful. How could anyone be bored when life is filled with the wonder of the drain? As Henrietta would say, meow meow, drain. Meow meow, wonderful. That day, after you sang goodbye and put on your street jacket and street shoes and left your perfect house, I left the TV and went to the kitchen where I blissfully watched the water go down the drain. For a while, my boyfriend didn't notice the, that something new and wonderful had entered my life. But one day, he found me leaning blissfully over a clean sink. Well, as you can imagine, and no one can imagine better than you, that was the beginning of a, steadily, a steady deterioration of our relationship. Now, there are more dirty dishes than ever. Finally, a week ago, Mr. Reitman dragged the truth out of me that the first drain I had ever experienced was yours. I explained that we were just being neighborly, but he said that if I didn't want our relationship to go down the drain, I had to stop visiting you, and that's why you haven't found me in front of the TV. Goodbye, neighbor. Platonically yours, Miss Odebashian. Miss Barbara Odebashian became a fan and neighbor of Mr. Rogers during the Watergate hearings when he and Senator Irvin became neighbors on Annette. So how funny is this letter? And I feel like I want to know more about Miss Odebashian. Like, first of all, did she dump Mr. Reitman? Because I seriously hope so. I would have been holding up a big leave him sign if I was around her. Um, and also, like, you know, I'm guessing by the little right up at the bottom that there's probably more of these kinds of letters. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I thought that was a really fun little snippet and wanted to share it with you. So that's it for me for today. Um, a little bit ranty, um, about different things. You know, it happens. I, I have these passions. <laughs> I think we all do. Um, you know, my opinions don't need to be everyone's and that's totally okay. Hopefully we live in a world where that doesn't prevent us uh, being friends. So that being said, um, I need to wrap it up and go to bed. So yeah, I'll talk to you all very, very soon. I hope you're all well. Um, and yeah, bye for now.